So this came in the mail today. It took about five days to get, and I'm pretty excited about it. It is a uh, really big Elegu Uno R3 project kit. Got it off Amazon. It's got just tons of stuff in it. I, uh, I can't even think of how many different things I could build with it. All right. So the most complete starter kits. Mega 2560 Project. Open it up, take a look. Alright, so it comes with a uh, CD. I assume this has got uh, yes, code libraries, PDF files. It's kind of got a, a little bit about what's in each of these containers. Uh, you can see, for example, the uh, you've got your remote in there. The, uh, remote, your ultrasonic range finder, stuff like that, rotary encoder. Fan blades, shields, um, ribbon cables. Oh, this is from a keypad. Okay. Wow. Yeah. This is uh, even a battery. Okay. Cool. Um, I almost, almost wish I would have bought one of these a long time ago because I've got so many parts. Let's see what else. Got a uh, relay in there. Okay. It's a, uh, just a normally open contact, I assume, since it's the only four poles on it. Oh, no, there is uh, five poles, so that'll have a normally open and a normally closed. So you've got a uh, joystick, the push-down function. Uh, you've got breadboard wires. You've got a cable, programming cable. You've got uh, some DuPont wires. A, uh, the Mega itself. We'll take a look at that shortly here. All right, so I got this opened up, and I'm taking a look at the board here. It's uh, it's got some nice features. I've got a, another Mega next to it here to just just point out a few differences. This this is kind of your typical clone. Uh, I've got a few of these. They work. You know, the CPUs are going to be the same. But um, I mean, just just for instance, the ICSP header on the clone is sitting off the board a little. It's a little crooked with this one. It sits flush. These are trimmed on the bottom. The entire USB interface they've cheaped out on on the Mega, and they've gone with this CH340 chip, which it's, it causes problems for some people. They've, they've gone with the actual processor on board on the Elegu one, which is a nice touch. Um, you've got some heavier components there. Just in general, um, a better feel to it. And it's interesting, the ground plane has almost got a crosshatch pattern to it. Never seen that before. And there's actually, they've actually gone as far as silk screening the headers. So if you're looking at this from the side, you can actually see what you're using. You know, maybe you've got the proto shield on top and your, you know, your numbers are covered or something. But I thought that was a pretty good touch. Um, even on the inside of the double header, you've got your pin numbers. Uh, yeah, all in all, that's pretty good looking mega. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. So we got everything out of the box and set up here. The uh, power supply module I didn't notice before has got that same crosshatch pattern that the Mega has. I like that. It's it's kind of neat. Just on the ground plane there. The, the board powers up fine. It's got a nice little light on it there. I've got the, uh, the wall adapter going to it. So I'm going to start making some stuff. So the CD is full of basically descriptions of what's in the kit. It, it walks you through installing the ID, IDE, getting libraries installed. Uh, it's got the IDE, it comes with the CD, version 1.6.9. Um, so if you need to, you can... Oh yeah, it walks you through getting the driver, everything like that. So if you, if you haven't done this, this is a great little tutorial to walk you through that. All right, I got the uh, CD in the computer. I'm going to plug this in and get started on some tutorials here. So I loaded the code for the uh, multi-LED display here, popped it on, and it came to life. It's uh, got a bit of a demo program on it. I'll just hit reset here. It'll kind of cycle through some letters of the alphabet and... That's pretty cool. You could you could basically take this code, adapt it to your needs, you know, make it uh, 
print out some letters or numbers or have some pictures or, uh, you know, bar, bar equalizer or something like that for some audio equipment. Um, yeah, it was quick and painless. So the kit comes with an accelerometer. The chip itself is an ADXL335 from Analog Devices. Now it's kind of a unique accelerometer. Well, not unique, but less common. Um, the outputs for the uh, the three axes are analog instead of uh, like I squared C that uh, you'll see in a lot of them, which is kind of cool because you can directly drive things with those outputs for responses. Um, I'm just going to be listening on my analog inputs for this example, but it's a pretty good chip. Uh, I've got the data sheet up here. And it is, it is 3.3 volts, but the Mega that I'm using has a 3.3 volt output. And uh, without digging into the data sheet too much, basically it, uh, it outputs 2.1 to 2.8 volts, I believe it was. Yeah, 0.1 to 2.8 volts. So I'll have to scale my uh, inputs accordingly. Okay, so I've got it hooked up going to three analog inputs, but it's, it's kind of hard to see from... The numbers that you get there, it's it's a very fine, well, no, it's not, it's a very coarse range on the accelerometer, so you don't, you often don't see little movements you do on the desktop, but it is, uh, you can see the different axes when I do this, it's a very small change, so these are probably going to be, and you can check the data sheet, um, a pretty coarse range, which is why these fine little movements aren't changing the voltage very much. So I've got a simple little bit of code here that just reads the, I guess that would be the uh, y-axis, and spits it out the serial monitor at a fairly high baud. And uh, I'll just rotate it in my hand here, and you can see what that's doing to the accelerometer, and that's just gravity pulling on the core, and the uh, analog interpretation of that. So... Yeah, it's it's responding very quickly. It's pretty smooth. I don't even have any filtering caps on there or anything like that. So yeah, cool. If uh, as far as analog accelerometers go, that's a great little device. Okay, I've got the RFID module wired up according to the manual here. Pretty simple. Okay, so I made a little breakthrough here. The uh, serial pinout listed in this document, despite having a mega pictured, those pins are actually for the Uno, and you need to change your sketch to accommodate the pins of the mega, which are at least outlined here in the sketch. Um, so change them there, change them here, wire them accordingly to the 50 bank down here, and, uh, yeah, I've, it just sprung to life as soon as I did that, so I'll show you a scan here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I pulled these away right away before, but if, uh, if you hold it to the reader, it will actually spit out the entire memory of the chip. In hexadecimal, but, uh, yeah, I did not know that, that they had that much memory. So I tweaked the code a bit to use this as a, kind of a more practical application if you were to say lock a door, or unlock a door I guess, based on the Cardi scan. I uh, set it up to turn on that little LED once it uh, deciphers all the code and confirms the card. Yeah, there it goes. So yeah, if you wanted to you could even uh, do a dual authentication, throw the keypad on there. But uh, yeah, it's pretty slick. Is the one final thing I'm going to do with this kit is set up the soil moisture sensor it came with. It's got uh, three terminals on it. It's kind of hard to see with the LED there on my lack of professional recording equipment here. But it's plus minus and S, which is signal. I've just got S going to an analog input and uh, plus and minus going to power. So you're supposed to put this in soil and based on the conductance of electricity between the traces... Uh, it's positive, negative, positive, negative, so uh, it increases the surface area that way. Um, based on the resistance between those, it will be the moisture in the soil. Now, I've actually used these in soil before, and they got really corroded. They don't last very long, but 
I thought it would be cool to use one as a water salinity, salinity tester. So the higher the salinity in water, the more it conducts electricity. So in theory, the higher these numbers should be, the more salt in it. One of these glasses is heavily salted. The other is just out of the tap. Got fairly hard water here in, uh, here in Calgary, but uh, it's just a, a simple sketch. It spits out what it reads on the analog zero input. Right now it's zero, so I'm going to put it in glass B on the right. Looks like it's averaging about 370. It's kind of slowly climbing. Anyways, um, glass on the left. It doesn't really zero off because there's water on it, but if I were to wipe it off, it would. Glass on the left. Put it into the same water level. Just covering the traces is where I went to. And we're at 465-ish. So... You guessed it, the glass on the left is salt water, the glass on the right is tap water. Now, one thing that's, this, and this is the reason it corrodes too, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on the camera here, come on, focus, but there are bubbles forming, and that is corrosion in the early stages. Um, it's same same as electrolysis, if you left it in there long enough, it would corrode, and you'll you'll notice that only every other one has bubbles on it. It's because the one side corrodes. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But the bubbles are the corrosion happening. Um, if this was stainless steel, it would be a lot better, but it's just traces on a PCB, so it's, it's okay if you want to measure it and take it out, but if you leave it in soil or water for any length of time, it's just going to corrode. But that uh, wraps it up for the kit. Anyways, um, there are all kinds of other projects you can do in the kit and all kinds that you can just improvise or combine with hacked up household gadgets to do all kinds of cool stuff and uh yeah overall it's great hardware thanks for watching